Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Sons of God. Now, who are God's children? Who are the sons of God? For this context that we're going to study today, God's children are no peace breakers. God's children are no peace fakers. God's children are no peacekeepers, but God's children are peacemakers. Peace breakers are people who all the time they try to distort or destroy peace in the world. Peace fakers are those who falsificate in peace. They say with their lips, yeah, we want peace, but in their hearts they do evil, they, they do war, they create conflicts. Peace keepers are those who try to avoid every kind of conflict. But that's not God's will too, and that's not the, the, the quality for Christians, for followers and children of God. But the quality and the, and the, the virtue of the children of God are to be peacemakers. Romans chapter 14 verse 19 says, Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. That's the duty of all Christians. That's the duty of all children of God. To lead to peace and to build each other in faith, in love, in joy, in harmony. But this war, let's see today, peace, we have to understand what really means this war. Because God said, blessed are the peacemakers. So we are here to make peace. So what is peace? You have to understand that the Bible, from the beginning to the end, is a, a, Bible, is a, a war, is a, is a letter of peace. It's a treatment of peace. In the beginning was peace. And at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, there will be peace. So God's plan for this world is to have peace, for this universe to be in peace. And when Adam and Eve, they were created, they have peace with God. And they have peace with one another. But after sin came into the world, this peace was destroyed, infected, or distortioned with the influence and the bad effects of the sin of the world. Why there is no peace in this world? Because there is sin. Why there is no peace in this world? Because Satan is at war with God. And because people, they have rejected peace. But you say, who is rejecting peace? Well, if you are rejecting God, if you are rejecting Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, you are rejecting peace. Not the peace that the world understands, but the peace that God wants you to understand today. All conflicts as a result of sin. Therefore, man cannot produce peace because man is a sinful person. Only the real peace comes from God, who is holy, who is peace. What is peace again? Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is the presence of righteousness. I will say it again. Peace is not the abs absence of conflict. It is the presence of righteousness. Why? Because Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and you will have all the sins that you're looking for, all the sins that you need in your life. And if you need peace, you have to first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So having peace is a desire, but making peace is a decision. You want to have peace, and that's the desire of your heart. But making peace is a decision that you have to put in action. God is calling us not to desire peace, not to be peacekeepers or peacemakers or breakers, but He wants us to become peacemakers. We must to put our act in actions, our decisions of today. The world doesn't know what is peace because they don't know God. San Anonymous say, you don't have peace because you don't have God. No God, and then you will know peace. No peace, no God. No God, no peace. If you really know what is God, or who is God, and what God is, and knowing that God is peace, then you will have peace, for sure. Second Peter chapter 1, 2 says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 
If you have the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus our Lord, you will know what is the real peace. You will know who is peace and you will have peace in you. As I say, in the beginning was peace. And at the end of the story of humanity, there will be peace. But now we don't see peace in the world because it's seen today in the world. So God knew that there would be no peace in the world until he will make everything new again, new heaven and new earth. That's why he sent the Prince of Peace to this world. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the story of Nativity, that we celebrate every year at Christmas time, we remember the scenario when the angels of the Lord came to meet the shepherds who were watching the night. And then this multitude of celestial angels, they say, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, on earth, peace to men. Peace to men in whom his favor rests. In, in whom the favor of the Lord rests. Who have the favor of the Lord? Do you? Do you have them peace in your heart? Do you enjoy the peace of God today? God wants you to enjoy peace. He created you to have peace. He made this world a peaceful place, but they've sinned now. And we don't have peace until we have Jesus in our life, until we know God who is peace and receiving in our life so we can enjoy peace. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 11, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Blessed are the peacemakers because they will call the children of God or sons of God, said the Bible. We connected this beatitude with the beatitude that says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So if we, the meek inherit the earth, they will have great peace, says the word of God, as we see here. And we enjoy peace, and we will call the children of God. The Bible says that there is joy for those who promote peace. So if you really want to have a happy life, a blessed life, you have to promote peace. You have to let this peace increase in number, increase in, in, in amount, and fill the earth. What this peace will do in your life? How will be you affected by this peace? Well, many people say that peace of God is, will be enabled with you as you get beyond the regrets of the past. And you manage the anxiety of the present and you overcome the fears of tomorrow, then you will have peace, the peace of God. If you really know who God is, and you know that you need to be in peace with God, then you know that your regrets of your past are forgiven. You don't need to look at your past because God already forget all your sins. And you know that the, the, the anxieties of your sins or your requests today will be feeling peace. Actually, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says about prayer, don't be anxious or worry, but every request, every prayer that you have, give it to God, and then the peace of God who, who transcends all understanding will fill you. If you have worry, anxieties of the present, then you need peace, and this peace will come to you if you pray. You will overcome the fears of t tomorrow because you know that peace is leading you, that the decisions that you are making today will be in peace because you are making your decisions in the righteousness of God. Yes, righteousness and peace. How do you relate that? We know that if we meet peace, because peace is no unknown, it's a person, then we meet righteousness, that who is also a person. So, peace is righteousness. If we want to understand this concept, we have to turn our Bibles to James chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. And the Bible said, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who show in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Those who are looking for peace, those who are pursuing peace, they are pursuing peace. Righteousness. Once again, seek first the kingdom of God and what is the next word? His righteousness. And you will have peace. 
And you will have the rest of the things that you are looking for, that you are seeking for. You have seek first his righteousness, and then you will have the fruits of righteousness that is peace. Isaiah 32, 70 will say, the fruit of righteousness will be peace. Yes, the fruit of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. Do you really want peace? You have to seek righteousness in your life. Why we don't have peace in this world today? Because we are not looking for righteousness. You want to have righteousness in your life? You have to seek for Jesus in your life. You have to bring Jesus in, in your life. Business, you have to bring Jesus in your home. You have to bring Jesus in, in your life, wherever you are. If you have an area in your life that there is no peace, then you have to surrender that area to Jesus and let his peace be in control so you can have peace in your life. Look at yourself. What area of today in your life have no peace? What area of your, of, of your life have not just surrendered to Jesus? The Bible says, blessed are the meek. The meek is a person who has a strength but surrender his strength into someone who have an ownership on him. Like this stallion who have a mighty force for the mind and, and, and kill person, but under the control of his master, he became an, a useful instrument for traveling, for working, or any other kind of business. God wants people who are able to surrender their life, their hearts, their materials, their past, present, and future to God so they can enjoy peace. What is the area of your life that have not yet surrendered to Jesus? What is the area in your heart that is not yet surrendered to Jesus? That area, that relationship, that brokenness, that worry, that probably is a financial issue that you, are war is, you have full of anxiety to you today. You need peace in your finances. You are so worried. You are so, so, so disturbed about that. And you don't have peace even though you are here worshiping God and you are listening to this sermon today. But your heart is still worried about tomorrow. You don't have a happy Monday. Why? Because you have not yet peace in your heart, in that area. You need to die spiritually to that area and born again into the peaceful life that God wants to give you. He is in charge of you. He is in control of you. He wants to give you peace and enjoy peace forever. Real peace comes from God. It doesn't come from us. Peace is a person. Peace is righteousness. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave you. I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I do not be and do not be afraid. God has peace for us. He is peaceful and He is peace. And He wants to give to all of you His peace. My peace, says the Lord, I am giving to you. This peace comes from Jesus, comes from God. And this peace is the fruit of the Spirit. So it comes from the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says in Galatians 5.22, by the fruit of the Spirit, it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, God have all these fruits for you, but you have to receive it. You cannot bear this fruit. It is a gift from God. God wants to give you His Spirit so you can enjoy peace. Yes, we need peace today. And we need to understand that without reconciling with God, there is no peace between God and us. I mean, what you have done this week? What have you done until today? There's something that you regret for you have done or you have not done the last week. That's what brought you to the church today. You come looking for an answer. You come looking for a favor, for peace in your heart because you know that probably you are not right with God right now. You don't see in yourself righteousness because you are in war with God. Actually, when we see the Bible, God created this war with peace, with order. But after sin came to this war, this war started to be in conflict. And we see war everywhere. But pay attention. God is not at, in war or at war with people. People are in war with one another, with each other. And people are in war with God. It's not that God is in war with us. 
If God really wants to make war with us, we won't be here. It will be just like that that we will disappear. If God really wants to make war with us, if God really wants to make war with, with the devil, then he will, as the Bible said in Revelation, he just needs to open his mouth and will disappear. Jesus is our peace. Yes, it is. But we also need to be in peace with God. It's not just to understand that God is peace. It's to understand that we need to reconcile with God and to make peace with God. Without having peace with God, we cannot make peace for others. We cannot become peacemakers. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 17 says, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the very, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. God did the first step to reconcile man and God, humanity and God. God already made the first step. God is not at war with people. He doesn't want to make war. He wants to make peace with people. And that's why he sent his own son. He demonstrated he is willing to make peace with people because he sent already his son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in his son can have peace with God. And this, recon this reconciliation is not by just the human effort, but by the blood and sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. So we can be assured that his peace is guaranteed by the blood and the death and the sacrifice of his own son. And we... As children of God, as followers of Christ, we have this ministry to make peace, to ministry the word, the ministry of reconciliation, as we just see this scripture here. Making peace, reconciling men and God. Making peace, reconciling men and God. We have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. And I want to paraphrase what 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20 says. So I just put in different colors the words that I added for us to understand that we are peacemakers. The original is in white letters. But read with me what the Bible said in this Pastor Nader version. 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 20 says, All this is from God, who made peace with us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of peacemaking that God was making peace with the world to himself in Christ. No counting men's sins against them, and he has command, committed to us the message of peacemaking. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, or we are peace, Christ's peacemakers, as though God were making his appeal to us. We implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled. May peace to God. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We have the ministry to be... In, Intermediate between those who are in war. But this cannot be fulfilled if we don't understand that peace is righteousness. That peace is Jesus. In other words, you need to bring Jesus to other people. Nothing in this war can make this war a peaceful war. You know, you see in the news <clears throat> this week. You have heard the news. There's rumors of war. There's war. There are rumors of, of attacking nation against nation. And the, this last week, a tragedy again in, in France. When people were celebrating and full of joy, thinking that there was peace and no more reason, even though France was in a state of emergency, this terror attack happened again. And it just, the power of one person and a machine to kill almost 100 people, and many who are still in impossible risk to die. What happened? What is going on in the world? Where are the peacemakers? Why we cannot make peace to one another? Because we are focusing in making peace in a different way. Because we try to make peace with human wisdom and human efforts. No, consider that it's only by the power of God that we can bring peace to this world. You see that the United Nations, they are getting together every day to try to keep peace in this world. And until today, they cannot finish their job. Every day, they are fighting each other. Every day they are seeing that nations are fighting each other. Every day we see that families are fighting each other. 
cultures are fighting each other. That even in, in our family members, in home, there's war. There's war in the schools. There's war in the, 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 the marketplace. There are wars in companies. There are wars in business. There's wars in, 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 in all kinds of competitions that we have. Because the problem is no outside of man. It's inside the man. It's our heart. And it's a relationship that we see that blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God, and blessed are the peacemakers because they will call the children of God. You cannot have peace or become a peacemaker if you don't have a pure heart. If you cannot, and you cannot have a pure heart if there is no God in you, washing you and cleansing you all your sins. You need God. You need Jesus. This world needs God. This world needs Jesus. And without Jesus, there won't be real peace. That's why the Apostle Paul would say to all of us that we have to take the gospel of peace to the world. Don't just let this peace in, be enjoying in these four walls that we have in the church. We have to take this peace outside of the church, outside of this building, and to bring the gospel of peace to the world. Without this gospel of peace, this war will be in conflict all the time. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 11 to 15 said, Put the whole armor of God. Be ready for war. Be ready for fighting. Fighting for peace. Because we are not peacekeepers to try to avoid conflict, to try to avoid war. Because, well, if we are trying to show righteousness or, or, or pursue righteousness, we're going to be persecuted. Exactly. What's what that going to happen that we're going to talk about next week? Because if you are a real peacemaker, you're going to be persecuted. You're definitely going to be persecuted. So I, I'm warning you from now. You really want to be a good Christian. You're going to be a real Christian. Be ready for persecution. Because if you seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, you're going to be persecuted because of righteousness. Remember that the Beatitudes start with righteousness and we finish with righteousness. You are seeking righteousness and you're going to also be persecuted because of righteousness. God will bring you peace if you are bringing righteousness in your life, in this world. Pull the whole armor of God. Start fear. And with your feet, fit it with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Beautiful are the feet to those who bring the good news. Romans chapter 10. Because they will preach the gospel to the nations. We have to pray for the nations. We have to pray for our country. We have to pray for our family. We have to pray for us that peace will come to this world today. It's not just a celebration of Christmas. It's not just a good wish that we have for the world. We have to take actions. It's not just having a, a, a dream that this world will have peace. We have to decide to become peacemakers. The Bible encourages us to pray for peace. Psalms 122, 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. Jeremiah 29, 7 says, Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Matthew 10, 12, 30 says, As you enter the home or any house, give it your greeting, and if the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. It is not let your peace return to you. Let's do something today. As soon as we get at home after this service, as soon as you enter in your home, pray for peace in your home. Pray for peace in your home. And when you get out of your home, pray for peace for your city. Pray for peace for the nations. And pray for peace for Israel too. That's God's command. So we may all become peacemakers. Do we want to show the Beatitudes? We need the Christ attitude, the be attitude, to put the cross in our hearts and know that this cross in our hearts brought us peace. By his wound, we have peace. And by his sacrifice, we are reconciled with God. Let's be peacemakers, showing to this world the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Bring one more person to church. We want more person to Jesus. And let them know the God of peace. Let them know that they need righteousness. They need Jesus. And everything that we'll have in their life will be under the peace of God. It doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. But we're going to be blessed by His grace, His mercy, His faithfulness, His peace, His love. In Jesus' name. Let's pray.